Yet everything about Genesis 3 was tempting. She saw with her eyes. She desired with her heart. She said it was a tree desirable to make one wise, and she ate of it. It was all sensual. Nothing about spiritual. What God was using Eve's example to show us is we cannot take Satan on in our sensual stance. We've got to take him on in the spirit. bring you greetings in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much for joining us today here on Keys to Kingdom Living. I'm your host, Pastor Asa Dockery. I am delighted and excited that you have joined us for this special viewing of A Million Miles Away, Part 2. If you were not able to catch the first part, always go on our website. You'll be able to find it right there on whcnorth.org. I don't want to hold up any more time. Let's get out the Word of God. Go with me, and let's hear the powerful conclusion of A Million Miles Away. But he had a little bit easier uh, way about him of trusting in God. God will teach us how to trust him. Now, here's why God wants to us to trust him. If we refuse to trust him, why he will allow us to have a well of experience. I'm trying to make this as palatable as I know how. <laughs> <laughs> the more we trust the Lord, the stronger our faith will stand in times of battle. That is so true. The more we learn to trust God, the stronger our faith will stand in times of testing, in times of battle. But what about for the new convert that's just come to Christ that doesn't really know the Lord or the, the disciple that hardens their heart whenever they face horrific trials. Maybe you know somebody like that. Every time they get into a trial, they're, they're fine with God until they get into trials. When they get into trial, they lose their Christianity and everything else about them. It's because they harden their, to, their hearts to God because he's allowing them to be uh, tried, afflicted. Now, for the new convert that does not know the Lord or the hard-hearted convert, Trust may be a real issue for them. So if you struggle in your walk with God once your faith is severely tried, know that God is still as much with you and for you as he is when all things are well. That right there was worth a drive. I could quit right there and take another offering. The, the writer of Psalm says, you are my God, verse 2. You are the God of my strength. Why do you cast me off? Where was his trust? It's like you, you've forsaken me. Right when I needed you the most, you've forsaken me. You've cast me off. Trust won't let you do that to God. Trust will say, though you slay me, yet I will still keep my faith in you. So trust is very hard to gain from a Christian from God's perspective. But once trust is developed, it's, it's valuable. It's precious to God. Now, God is always with us. So we must remember that no matter what comes our way. He's with us. Not only is he with us, he's for us. However, there are times during trials that it will seem as, as if God is a million miles away from you. You can't hear him. You, can't, you get in the Bible, and it's like it's just, just letters on a page. You ever experienced that? That's a hard place to be, especially if you're used to every day getting direction from God. Hearing from the Lord. All of a sudden you wake up and everything is going south quickly. You're getting one bad report after the other. And you go to the Word of God. You go to your prayer closet and you're just like crickets. God, are you on vacation? Hello, are you up there? Nothing. Silence. 
if you are there or you have found yourself having those feelings as if God has abandoned you, let me warn you, that is a very dangerous place to be. Moreover, it's dangerous, listen to me very carefully, to enter thoughts like God is not with you since you're having to go through great loss. Don't even let your mind go there. Well, God must not be with me. God must not be for you. That's anger coming up. You're resenting that hurt. Loss does not equate to God not being with you. It simply means that we are living in a fallen world where death, loss, and battles are a reality. But the real reality is God is with you, God is for you, and if God be for you, then none of this stuff that comes against you shall be able to separate you from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. Neither death, nor life, nor principalities, nor powers, or things present, or things to come shall be able to separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus. So be careful to guard your heart when a hard trial hits your life so that you only focus on what you've lost, the pain that you're experiencing, and the feeling that God is nowhere to be found. Well, he's getting down our all in our, our stuff, ain't he? When we get into that place, we've lost our car, we lost our house, we've lost everything, and it's like, God, all I, all I feel when I wake up, all I, I think about all day long is what I've lost. I focus only on my pain, and I feel like you've you're, you're forsaken me. Be careful, because that is a dungeon, and you don't want to fall into that. It's a trap of the enemy. Satan will use loss and tragedy, hear me well, to draw our heart's attention away from God and His goodness to focus only on our pain and loss. Oh, poor thing. If God really loved you, He wouldn't have let this happen to you. He does this because He wants to undermine, listen to me carefully, our trust in God and shake our faith. If God really loved you, He wouldn't let you go through this. He wouldn't have taken that from you. You wouldn't take that person from you at this point in your life. Anybody ever heard that? You'll notice here in Psalm 43 that this is actually a prayer. He's praying to God. The writer is pouring out his soul to the Lord and asking him to rescue him from his enemies and the negative thoughts, the negative feelings he was experiencing. Why are you disquieted, O oh my soul? He had to talk himself off the ledge, didn't he? This psalmist chose with his heart. Remember, you can let your soul rule you or you can let the Spirit of God rule you. It is your heart that makes the decision, correct? This psalmist uh, uh, overrode the negativity going on around him and the negativity going on in him, and he kept his eyes on the Lord. Lead me to that rock. Lead me to that place, Lord, to your holy hill, and I will once again bring my praises to your altar. In a trial, feelings will mislead you. So will negative thoughts. What you need when the enemy, uh, what you need when the enemy and, and your soul tell you that God has abandoned you is faith. You need to stand. Don't give yourself over to that despair, that despondency, that sense of hopelessness. Because all you're going to do is open up your soul to an ocean of water, doubt, fear, and unbelief, and you're going to begin drowning in that. And then you're going to kick into desperation. Be careful. Look there in Proverbs 3. Is this helping you? Verse 1. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. I love that. If you hide his word in your heart, then he'll give you length of days and, and long life, but he'll give peace to you. He'll add that to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with what? All your heart, not part of your heart, all your heart, and lean not to your own understanding. You've got to do both those things simultaneously. You've got to trust in the Lord, and you've got to not lean on your own understanding. But in all your ways, what? There's where we have the breakdown. Things ain't going our way. I'm not talking to you today, God. You're done on my bad side. Acknowledge him in all your ways, and he shall what? 
He will direct your path. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. As humans, we can rely too heavily on our thoughts and emotions as believers. Can we not? Dangerous ground. Do not believe your emotions or your thoughts. They are fake news. They will mislead you. They will deceive you. They will seduce you, especially in a trial. Don't trust your emotions. But as believers, God requires us to live by faith. What I'm about to drop on you was worth your drive all the way from Poland. I don't know how you drove over that ocean, but you did a good job. So when you enter a trial, going through trials now, when you enter a trial, that means your ears, your eyes, your thoughts, and your emotions will no longer be needed. You're in a trial. You're in a different realm in a trial than you were when you were not in it. You're now in the realm of the Spirit. Your eyes, your ears, your senses, your emotions, and your thoughts will not help you in this trial. These will trick you and could cause you to begin to believe that God has forsaken you because you do not feel Him. <laughs> that is so good. <laughs> they will. They, they'll trick you. They'll make you think that God has forsaken you when the truth is He is a very present help in times of trouble. See, when I can't feel him, I can still know he's with me because he has promised I will never leave you nor forsake me. So at that point, I cannot believe what my eyes see, what my ears hear, even what my heart wants to think or believe or what my, my thoughts and emotions wants me to feel and react to because I'm standing by faith in the Word of God and my God is faithful. He will deliver me out of the snare of the fowler. He will bring me safely up out of this ocean of trouble to to his holy hill he's promised it and he will do it right so you've got to stand by faith and walk through that thing and when you choose to, to, to stand and walk by faith you'll start walking on water that situation that was trying to drown you in your soul that situation will not be able to penetrate your faith because you got the shield of faith quenching the fiery darts of the wicked it can't get to your mind because you're not listening to your mind you're not obeying your emotions you're not listening to your feelings no God has not forsaken me he's here with me I can't feel him but I know he's with me because I didn't get saved by feelings I just base all my obedience after I'm saved on my feelings. If I feel led, I'll do it. I slipped that in. <laughs> yes, there's going to be a long line up in heaven of those who felt led, explaining their leadings to the Lord. I want to see how that works. Now, we cannot give credence place to our thoughts and emotions and feelings, but we must trust in the Lord with our whole heart so that He is able to direct our steps through the fallout of the fiery trials. Now, it's one thing to have a trial, but that's not the full impact of what Satan's wanting to do. It's called shock and awe. You go in to a trial and you get the initial impact. This is not a good day. But then after that is the fallout, the emotions, the, the reverberation, the repercussions of this bad news. And it's that that you've got to watch out for. God, I'm telling you, he's talking to us. It's the reverberation of what has happened to you, the response of how you're going to react to what has just happened to you. That is where Satan is going to come in. A serpent don't just bite. He bites so he can release toxins to paralyze his victim his prey so he can eat them so satan wants to hit you shock but he wants to awe you he wants your attention and that's how he can get it many times so if you're experiencing a hard trial and you feel like god is nowhere to be found on the radar let your faith lead you to the rock of your salvation and plant your feet there until you get through this Otherwise, here's the problem. If you fail to guard your heart, to trust in the Lord with all your heart, lean not to your own understanding, 
and you give place to the enemy through your emotions, your thoughts, your negativity, and feeling like God is not with you, you could open yourself up to the lies of Satan inadvertently and walk away from the Lord as, the, as a disciple or as the disciples did when they decided to go fishing. Three times Jesus had to go to them and talk to them about doing what he called them to do. Finally, after the third time, they snapped out of it. There is the disorder, post-traumatic stress syndrome. And it's after somebody has been traumatized. Debbie and I have been counseling people for years. And we have seen that when people are traumatized, that many times they will open themselves up to a demonic spirit. If you are traumatized, if you have PTSD, then that means you're being terrorized by something. You had the experience, it traumatized you, but when you got the trauma, it opened you up to a spirit. Now that spirit is tormenting you. You will find studies talking about when children are victimized, whether it's molestation, sexual abuse, whatever the case may be, many times these children will grow up, instead of being the victim, they become the predator. Because in their trial, in their trauma, there is a spirit that comes in. Hear me well, the Spirit of God give me this for a reason. The reason this happens is, in a moment of trauma, there is that moment of doubt where your soul kicks in and says, God has abandoned you. And when you, if you don't catch that, fear could come in. Trauma can cause something to come in that's not of God. And you can begin to believe that lying spirit God has abandoned me. He wouldn't have let my uncle do that to me. He wouldn't let my aunt do that to me. He wouldn't let my mother or my father do that to me. So God did abandon me. What you just did is you opened yourself up to a lie. Now you're under the influence. I'm not talking possession. I'm talking un under the influence of a, a lying, seducing spirit. And now that spirit is altering who you are because you're listening to it instead of to God. And then after you have listened to that, you start taking on that identity because it is a, a, a way of protecting yourself. I will never let this happen to me again. And what you end up doing is you're making an inner vow which will cause you to ultimately become what you hate the most. Laying a lot on you today, I'm sorry. I was going to go to Genesis 3, but let me just cut it short. Here Adam and Eve are created in the image and likeness of God. God has told them not to eat of the forbidden fruit of the tree of knowledge. Satan comes and says, no, go ahead, you'll be like God. She's operating, Eve, Eve is operating by her senses. And when she partakes of this, Adam, now, Eve is deceived. Paul tells us that in Timothy, but, Paul, but Adam was not. Adam knew the truth. Eve was the one who was deceived. Even so, Adam is standing right there beside her when she's eating, and he gets, she gives him the fruit, and he eats of it also. Now, what I want to ask is, this is before the fall. When Eve is being seduced, it's before the fall, right? No sin. They're created in the image and likeness of God. They're, they're innocent. But they're both sensual. Because where is the consciousness of God in them? All you hear out of Eve is God has told us that we should not eat of the tree nor touch it lest we die. That's all. Where is the God consciousness? Now here is the crux of the problem that the Lord wanted me to address today. Why don't we have a more God consciousness in times of trials, but also in times of temptation so that it keeps us from sinning against God. 
See, they were created in the image. Listen to me. They were created in the image and likeness of God, yet everything about Genesis 3 was sensual. She saw with her eyes, she desired with her heart. She said, it's a tree desirable to make one wise, and she ate of it. It was all sensual. Nothing about spiritual. What God was using Eve's example to show us is we cannot take Satan on in our sensual stance. We've got to take him on in the spirit. Had they taken them, him on in the spirit like Jesus did in the wilderness, we have, we would have overcome that temptation and not fallen. But she gave place to her senses and, and Adam gave place to his senses. And we must not do that because it, it deafens us to the voice of God. Your senses, your emotions, your desires, your thoughts will deafen you to God's voice if you're heeding them because your heart, you can't be a servant to two masters. So if you're listening to your flesh, it's hard to listen to the Spirit at the same time. You've got to choose in the garden of decision which one you're going to listen to. And the one you listen to is the one that's going to lead you to wherever you're going to go. Hebrews uh, 3, we're almost done. Just bear with me. Verse 1, I mean verse 7. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you will uh, hear His voice, hear His voice. Three simple words. But do not harden your hearts as in the rebellion. In the day of the trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, and saw my works, how long? Forty years, God worked with them. God showed them His mighty works, showed them His love, His goodness for 40 years. And continually, for 40 years, they hardened their heart to the voice of God. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said, they always go astray where? Aha, for they have not known my ways. Here's how they went astray. They were going after the desires rather than listening to God. And you cannot listen to your desires and go after them and hear the voice of God. You have to harden your heart to the voice of God. And we have a modern day church that is doing that. Going after the lust of this world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. And while doing so, they're hardening their heart continually to the voice of God. And they're giving themselves over to a seducing spirit, not thinking that they're doing it. That's exactly what they're doing. And that will open them up to believe a lie. Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 3 and I'll show you scripturally. 2 Timothy chapter 3. I've been wanting to preach this for a long time. God's had me teaching on desires, lust for uh, about a month. But finally, God has given me the, the opportunity to share this with you today. That's probably why there's so much on it. Because there was a lot in me about it. 2 Timothy chapter th 3, verse 1. But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, Without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasures rather than lovers of God. So you've got to make a decision, right? Having a form of godliness. See, that's what happens when Christians decide to let their lust lead them rather than listen to the voice of God where they want to do the, what they want to do. I go efficient instead of doing what God wants me to do. Denying its power from such people turn away. We are certainly living in the days that Paul prophesied about here in this chapter. People are giving themselves over. I'm not talking about sinners. I'm talking about Christians are giving themselves over to their feelings, feeling like God has somehow abandoned us and forsaken us and giving themselves over to their desires, their lust, instead of standing on the truth of God's word. Now, we know that's the truth because even preachers ha have watered down the gospel have quit preaching the truth uh, to a large degree. 
Thank God there's still at least 7,000 that haven't bowed their knee to Baal. But, the, but for a large degree of people in the body of Christ, there's been a lot of bowing to political correctness. Get the truth out because it offends people. It's more about feelings than it is about truth. Is God not speaking to us? Showing us exactly line upon line, precept upon precept, that we're living in the day and giving you scripture and verse about what's going on and, and still people's up. Where's God? He's right there. Just get the hardness out of your heart. Now, because believers are giving themselves over to feelings and lust instead of standing on God's word, as a result, we're seeing the manifestations that Paul listed here in his letter to Timothy. Where are people's faith and where is their trust in God? Wow. That's why it, 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 it's so rough in the body of Christ right now. Men are lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. Lovers of money, bolsters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents. Have you ever seen the time when, when children are so disobedient to parents as they are now? Unthankful, entitled. I want to add that one, but I can't. I'll get shot. Unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers. Without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty. See, we're seeing all these manifestations of the flesh, are we not? It's because people are going astray, going after these strange gods and turning away from the God that they feel like has abandoned them in their hour of need. But he was right there all along. Stand to your feet. As I get ready to leave you today, I want to let you know that it is my sincere honor and privilege to be able to share time with you in the Word of God, knowing that when you hear the Word, it will not return void. It will accomplish what God has purposed for it to accomplish in your life. So thank you for being part of this program, part of this ministry. If you need any prayer requests, send, you can send them to us at prayer at whcnorth.org, or you can call our church office. We have people uh, on staff that can pray with you, agree with you, and uh, let me know what is going on in your life so that I can be praying with you as well. Also, if you have watched this ministry for a while and you believe in the integrity of it and you know that we preach the truth, I want you to take that next step from viewership and become a sponsor of this uh, program. And for what God is doing through this ministry to the nations of the world is just unfathomable. See, when God's word goes out, it changes hearts. It impacts lives. And you can be a part of that. Will you prayerfully consider sowing a seed of faith into this ministry? It will be tax deductible. And all proceeds go to the editing and production of these programs so other people can hear the gospel of the kingdom. God bless you until this time next week is my prayer.